Well, hello everyone and welcome back if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, I hope that you enjoy this particular video. This video will be different from my other reviews. Normally, I give a de give detail about the product, the pros and cons, how you can use it, try to relate it to everyday use. But this particular product will be told in in the sense of a story because this was the first digital camera that I purchased when I was not that knowledgeable about astrophotography. So when I got into astrophotography, I needed to look for a camera. And I did internet searches, I went on forums, I looked at recommendations, and I decided based on my research that I should get the and I'll give it right here, the ASI 178mm. This is actually a pretty good camera. But what I did not know at the time was that it was a monochrome camera. And I was like, okay, monochrome, I'll just add the color later. I used it for, as for solar photography first, and it works great for that. It is a great camera if you're interested in doing solar photography because since the, since the sun is one color, during processing, you add the color to it. You don't, you don't have to worry about color when dealing with solar photography. But then I was like, okay, I, I'm good with this solar photography, so let me go to observe planets and take pictures of different planets. And I took my camera, took my telescope, which was the at, for planetary photography, the next to our ADSC, I went out and I was taking great images. The, the camera will produce great planetary images. I cannot, I, I cannot say that enough. But when I went to processing, I realized that it is in black and white and there was nothing I could do to change that. I couldn't turn it into a color image. My research and the reviews did not tell me that in order to take advantage of the monochrome camera, you have to take the images using different filters under different wavelengths. I did not know that. And that's why the point of this review is to highlight that if you get a monochrome camera and you want to take images of planets, or even deep space objects. I will note that this product is not designed for deep space objects, but it is a camera. And therefore, if you decide to use it for deep space objects, you need to, you need to take it under different filters. So you can, so you can either use, use them, as I have, a manual filter wheel or automatic filter wheel, and you take the images of the object under each way of the, under the different wavelengths. The light wavelengths will be red, green, blue. Some filter wheels have a luminescence filter. Some don't. The filter wheel that I have have a luminescence filter. You take the image four times, at least, if you're not getting high, if, if everything is okay, then you take the image four times. You might have to take it more than that. You take, and when you get the processing, you combine the red image, the blue image, the green image, the luminous image. You combine it into one image and that gives you a color image. Now, why would you use a monochrome camera over a color camera? Well, a monochrome camera produces higher quality image images because you're, it produces a higher quality image and therefore it give, it, it makes, brings out more of the color as opposed to a color camera. Now I will let you know that depending on who you're showing the image to, most people won't be able to tell the difference between a color image for using a color camera and an image using a monochrome camera and combine everything. And therefore, if, you're, if your goal is to show your friends, show your family members, show strangers, just strangers or post it on Facebook or social media, 
you probably won't need a monochrome camera because the color camera, you take it one shot, you have a color image, you can move on. If for a monochrome, you have to t it takes more time because you have to take the images in multiple wavelengths and then combine those images. And unless you're doing it for people who can tell the difference, it's not really worth the effort to me. Now, I will note that, as I said previously, using it for solar photography is great. I would purchase a, purchase a camera for solar photography because it's in, it is in black and white. You, in processing, you will add the color, you will do the processing, and you will, great, you will create a wonderful image. Now, what can you see out of this camera in terms of field of view? Well, as I mentioned in another video for my color digital camera, these cameras change the field of view of the telescope, and it has to be calculated. And what you do, what you need is the focal length of, of the telescope. That's all telescopes have a focal length. And you take the width of the chip in the camera and you basically use this calculation and it will give you the field of view of the camera and the telescope in arc minute. Arc minutes are basically a distance that's less than a degree. You have arc minutes and arc seconds, and they are basically distances that are less than a degree. And once you have that information, then you can find what objects are the distance of the object in of a particular object that you're trying to see in arc minutes. And that can tell you, or arc seconds, or in degrees, and that can tell you what you will be able to see using the digital camera and your telescope. So unlike previous videos, I would say, well, for the Nexstar SEA, you can see these type of objects, you can see these type of objects. For digital cameras, it's really dependent on the camera, and the telescope that you're using. One digital camera, when you add to the Nexstar, or at least in my case, the Nexstar SE or my Dobsonian or my solar telescope, before using an eyepiece, I can see the moon. When using the camera, I can't see the moon, all right? The moon is too large. Well, that's because the camera changed the overall focal length. Whereas for another telescope, you use the, digital, the same digital camera, you use it with a different telescope, all of a sudden, you can, see, you can see the full moon, you can see the sun, the full disk of the sun, you can see planets. It's all dependent on the digital camera and the telescope. And so therefore, what this, what this review really comes down to is that if you are interested in solar photography, using a monochrome camera is great. If you are interested in planetary and or deep space objects, this camera produces high quality images, but do not forget to have or purchase a filter wheel with the different filters, either manual or an automated one. And understand that you have to take the, uh, the image of the object with each filter. And depending on the quality of those images, you might be at that for a long period of time, which is why some people, when they do astrophotography, uh, is out there for hours taking these particular images because they have, they're going to go back and process during processing and combine all of them into one color. Color image. Therefore, for this particular camera, for this particular re review, I will say that this camera is a great camera, especially for the price. But do not forget, if you decide to get a monochrome camera, that it is great for solar photography. 
You're taking pictures of the sun. It is great. If you decide to use it for planetary and or deep space objects, do not forget to purchase a filter wheel. With the filters, you'll need a red filter, basically. You'll need a blue filter, basically. You need a green filter, basically. You'll need a luminescence filter, basically. And I will actually post in the video, will list those particular wavelengths so that you, when you go purchase them, you know what wavelengths to get. And that you have to combine them into one image in order to get the color image. And that when purchasing this type of camera, make sure you do the calculation first to know your field of view with your particular telescope. Because you don't want to get the camera with your telescope and you let's say you have the idea of I want to take pictures of, I want to take pictures of a full moon. I can see the full moon fine in my tele, in my telescope when I use an eyepiece. Well, the camera changes the field of view and therefore you don't want to purchase a camera, go out there, attach it to your telescope, take the images and all of a sudden the field of view is too small to take an image of a full moon. And therefore you want to make sure you do that before you purchase the tele the purchase a digital camera. And that is the review. I hope you've enjoyed this particular review. I tried to use a story format since this particular camera is dear and dear to my experience and growth in astronomy. And please feel free, if you have any questions, to leave them in the comments. Please do not forget to like the video. And I will see you again.